Good morning. Today is Sunday, May 10th. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Today we're going to talk about the four Gospels that begin the New Testament in our Bibles. These Gospels tell the story of Jesus' life, but we're going to explore today who are the authors of these four books. Our first book is Matthew, and Matthew is also known as Levi, and he's one of Jesus' 12 disciples. He was a tax collector, and because of his job, he was absolutely despised by the citizens that he lived amongst. Matthew uses very language that is very specific and money-related in his writings that the other three authors don't use. An example is the two drachma temple tax in chapter 17, verse 24, and the Greek word stator in chapter 17, verse 25. Matthew mentions gold and silver 28 times, but it's only mentioned once in the book of Mark and four times in the book of Luke. He also records the Lord's Prayer using the words debts and debtors, which Luke does not. Matthew's writing style is highly organized. As a tax collector, he would have had to keep very meticulous records. Matthew begins with a genealogical record that traces the lineage of Jesus back to Abraham. He writes to the Jews to prove that Jesus is the Messiah and to explain God's kingdom. This book is written especially to the Jews to prove that Jesus is the Messiah. Our next book is Mark. Mark is the shortest book of the four Gospels and it was the very first one written. Mark begins by declaring his statement for writing. The NIV version of the Bible states, the beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ Son of God. He leaves no doubts what his story will be about. He structures his book into sections. The first section is about Jesus the servant and it details stories about the signs and wonders that demonstrate that Jesus is the Son of God. His second section, you could title that one Jesus the Ransom. And this one contains the story of Jesus' suffering and his death. The third section would be the teaching section. It connects the other two and helps us to see how the, the sorrow and the suffering belong together with the signs and the miracles and the wonders. Mark writes to present the persons, works, and teachings of Jesus, and he's writing specifically to the Christians in Rome. One of the most striking features about the book of Mark is the Messianic secret. This refers to the times that Jesus asked his disciples or someone else that he's done a miracle for or healing for to keep the secret about his identity or about the miracle performed. And there are eight of those events recorded in this book. So who was Mark? It's believed he was John Mark, not one of the 12 disciples, but he did accompany Paul on his first missionary journey. Not a lot of information is known about Mark other than what I've just shared with you. Our next gospel is Luke. Luke is the most comprehensive gospel. Luke's choice of vocabulary and diction show that the author of this book was very educated. Luke was a doctor, he was a Christian, and he was a Greek. He is the only known Gentile author in the New Testament. Luke was a close friend and companion of Paul, and Luke also wrote the book of Acts. He writes to the Gentiles and to people everywhere. Luke affirms Jesus' divinity, but the real emphasis of the book is to show Jesus' humanity as well. As a doctor, Luke was a man of science, and as a Greek, he was a man of detail. He begins and he opens his book by outlining his extensive research and explaining that he is reporting the facts. Luke makes frequent um, references to illnesses and diagnosis, and Luke stresses the relationship that Jesus had with people. His book emphasizes prayer, miracles, and angels, and records inspired hymns of praise, and actually gives women a prominent place. Most of chapter 9, verse 51, through chapter 18, verse 35, is not found in any other gospel, but is exclusive to the book of Luke. And lastly, but not least, we have John. John 
is John the Apostle, son of Zebedee, brother of James, and called a son of thunder. He's the author of this book. He was a fisherman in Galilee who Jesus called to be an apostle. The book of John is believed to be the last of the four Gospels written. John writes to new Christians and those searching non-Christians who want to find out more about Jesus. He writes to prove conclusively that Jesus is the Son of God and that all who believe in him will have eternal life. He provides an account of Jesus' life and the signs that he performed so that people will believe in Jesus and experience eternal life. John's text does not record any genealogy. It also omits any records of Jesus' birth, childhood, temptation, transfiguration, appointment of the disciples, nor any account of Jesus' parables, ascension, or the Great Commission. Over 90% of what John has written is unique to his gospel. He records eight miracles, six of which are unique in the Gospels to this book alone. One such example is the Upper Room Discourse, which is found in chapters 14 through 17. John's book is not an accounting of Jesus' life. It is a powerful argument for the incarnation, a conclusive demonstration that Jesus was and is the very heaven-sent Son of God and the only source of eternal life. John records that Jesus states, I am, 45 times in this gospel, with 24 of those being emphatically stressed in his text and very prominently emphasized. These statements show statements of self-identification with the Father, the I am that I am. A great example of this is found in the 8th chapter, verse 58. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, before Abraham was born, I am. I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to the Gospels. In putting this together for you today, I used several sources. My first was, of course, my trusty Bible. I also used as a resource the Ultimate Bible Guide and 100 Standalone Bible Studies. I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to the different books in the New Testament Gospels, and I hope that you'll find time today to spend some time in these Gospels, look at them and read them. There are some great resources online that you can find that are free, where you can actually compare the stories that are related in the Gospels. You can compare how the authors wrote those stories, and again, you'll see how the author's background and education comes forward in these stories and what their emphasis is when they're writing these stories. Again, Luke, having been a doctor, he tends to be very factual and very scientific in a lot of his explanations. And so it's very fascinating to compare the Gospels. So I hope on this Mother's Day that you have a wonderful day. We're experiencing quite a cold snap in May, which is um, unusual. But I hope that you can get outside and enjoy your families today. And I just wish you all the very best. God bless.